Well, the screen used to be next to where I'm standing. It used to turn right here. It used to head towards where those hay bales are, just to the right of them. It basically followed a tree line all the way around. Kind of like a uh, semicircle. The opening was about 10, 12 feet across, which is pretty much what you see here. It was all stone and riprap. Now, the city's water line comes through here. And the stream used to cross it in two positions. It used to cross somewhere in here, and then as it made the turn, the second one was down to where there was a little bit too rapids down there. Uh, as far as the depth, it was probably a good uh, six feet down from where the soil is right now down to the stream bed. So this is the original soil level and the stream was exactly here. As you can see, it's been filled in. It went through where this pile is. Along the path that I'm walking. To here. And then curve. So you're walking the exact path where the, the stream used to be at? Yes, yes I am. Okay. And then here. Here. The original riverbed, stream bed, was about 15 feet wide. Okay. The new stream, quote, trench that they dug is uh, mm, four or five feet and uh, is actually higher and is now choking out the roots of the trees that are left that they didn't destroy. They removed every tree, all the understory. So where we're standing at right here, all used to be forest. So yes. for, my, for my readers, a basic idea would be like the forest that's over here. Exactly, yes, so it would have been exactly like that. So the stuff that looks like this here used to be over where we're standing at right here. Yes which is basically wetland. There was an old pipe that I believe was a sewer pipe or a water pipe, I do not know exactly which, that actually crossed the riverbed. We've owned our house for 25 years. That pipe has always been in the middle of the riverbed. I believe that they decided that it was a dangerous situation. There was a, a danger of contamination possibly and that it needed to be addressed. So instead of engineering system and or moving the stream with an engineered system, they came out with a backhoe. Yeah. yeah. This is a flotation matter that came up from the last storm. As you can see, it's uh, four feet above the riverbed. And this is how fast and how rapid the water comes through here. Um, so it uses every ounce of the full 12 feet the original stream bed was. And now it has been reduced from the 12 feet down to the four feet. That's the bottom there. So where I'm, so, 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 so basically right here is what it used to be. That's the original, yes. That's exactly how it looked. And it was this wide. Well, it, it varies between, that's about 20, 22 feet to, to 12 feet, yes. But it did, uh, it was much wider than what they recreated. All right. Or created. The water comes out of, Payton, uh, out of Marjorie Reservoir. When it comes out of Marjorie Reservoir, uh, the last huge rainstorm we had, the, the end of the road was under two feet of water all the way up to that telephone pole. My husband and I, our cars got stuck in it and we wieded through two feet of water to get to our house. There's a serious chance because they've reduced the width of this stream bed that the water will be choked out in a neck and will now back up into the bottom of the valley where my house is. Which is down here. Which is down here. It's at the very bottom of the valley. Yeah. And uh, I'm suspecting that maybe I'm going to be flooded out this year. Never been flooded. We have this gully. But sure, it may be fine. I don't see how. I could see that tree going when all the roots get washed out. Which tree? The one to the, the, to the, the left? Large tru tulip tree, okay. The large tulip tree, single bite itself. See how close it is to the bank? Right. Now if they're going to scale up this bank back to, um, to armor it, well that tree is going to be gone. They're going to scale up it back, they're going to take the roots out of that, what is that, an oak? 
They'll be taking that tree out. And of course, this tree over to our right doesn't have a chance in hell. Oh, this one, all the roots are chopped, plus now it's on a corner. And if you notice down there, we have a pond that's developing. And if you look at the base of the pond, it's all full of siltation. And what about this hard 90 degree turn over here? What happens when a good rainstorm comes through? Uh, you think that's going to hold up at all? It's going to take a pounding and the water's going to go through. In fact, uh, in the last real heavy rains that we had when the um, when all the pipes were supposedly picked up by the reservoir and we had all the other uh, issues where the mayor said that the, this, the, the bridges were compromised due to the hurricane a number of years ago, the water was actually going over that peninsula down there. And it was a whole low oil swell, so as long as this gets high enough, it will go over that, it will pound against that. We have seen the water come up to the top of these banks. Oh, well, I showed him the debris, the flotation debris that's over there. We have, had, we have had a vehicle that flipped over, went off the bridge, which is what alerted me to the bridge situation that fell into the water. The water here that you see is a trickle. At that particular time was so deep, only the tires were sticking out of the water. The, the soil level over there, you can't tell from this angle, but were you to go over into the woodland itself and look, it is actually two feet higher than the, the forest floor. And as a um, professional gardener, I will tell you that every tree that is under two feet more soil than it was originally will die. Additionally, these are tulip trees. This one here is a tulip tree, that's a tulip tree, that's a tulip tree. And as you can see, when they trenched it, they broke the roots. And tulip trees are very tall. These trees are about 150 feet tall. There is actually no support now for those trees in order to assist them in standing up when there's wind or um, anything else. So there's a real good chance those trees are going to die. Yeah, I mean, logic would dictate that since the soil is like this now with a trench, you're going to have soil erosion and these roots are going to be more exposed and it will probably fall in a matter of time. Absolutely. Now you can see they put hay down on this side. There is a rainstorm uh, of pretty good intent uh, coming tonight and tomorrow. On the other side, they have hay bales, but they didn't finish putting the hay bales down. So any rain, it, and there's no silt fence over there either. It's over here, but it's not over there, which means that all of that hillside there will definitely siltation down into the stream. Well, what I have a question about is I understand putting siltation fence, which normally is to keep any kind of disturbance from getting into the wetlands areas. I don't know why you need it against the road, unless they're worried about water coming off the road into here and then here. I thought I would have thought their priority would be along this stream bed to take all this disturbed soil, which now if we have any kind of rain, if you notice the soil is at least two or three feet higher yep. than the rest of the ground here. Plus, I don't think it's such a wise idea to be burying uh, brush, which is going to rot, create sinkholes, and have other issues. I mean, there is just, there seems to be no correct, uh, correlation between the various departments, one that's doing the job and one that is actually looking at the environmental issues. Um, I still don't understand how this is going to replace what was over there. Yeah, this is all the trees that they cut down from doing that project. Uh, it runs from everything from elm to ash to maple to ironwood. It was a very diverse forest. Um, I would say uh, the average regrowth in here is probably 30 to 40 years with some trees, some of the tulip trees actually being at least 50 to 75 years old. Um, you can't tell the depth, but this is all cut trees. And you can see this, the soil here, this is what I was saying about the level of the soil. This is two and a half feet taller than the, than so, the forest floor. So that, this right here is two and a half feet taller than where you're standing at right here. Absolutely. All of these trees, every tree that has two and a half feet more soil on its roots will die. They smother. The trees, any plant wants to be planted at the level at which it grew. So this is just... And it's a mess. I mean, it's got tree branches. It's covered the branches that the trees that they cut down, they just bulldozed soil on top of it. No regard, no understanding that this is a wetland. This is a forest floor. This is not a, I don't know. I, I, it's like, I, I don't even understand it. I, I don't have words for it.
We've got all this wood under here that's going to wind up getting buried under here. Who knows how much is under there? This is going to rot, and you're going to have sinkhole situations here. You got a dead tree right here. Why don't you take it down? This thing is ready to go. When you have erosion, this is the soils are going to become suspended soils, and they are going to wind up downstream into the Payton Aaron Brook corridor, which is already still on the water bodies for not meeting the Clean Out Water Act of 2005. So we're just going to possibly complicate a situation here. If there was some coordination with talking to people who would be in the area who may have inter knowledge, and if there was possibilities of these various departments. If they have to do an emergency repair, I would believe that they should contact the health department that's directly responsible for the wetland situations to ensure that we are not negatively impacting a situation here. It's particularly upsetting on lots of levels, but um, as you know, we have fought for five to six years to maintain the integrity of this hillside that you see. Right. The Coltswood pro pro project was supposed to occur up there. We have successfully managed to slow that down and actually get the city to think about the environmental damage to this area. And then we turned around and this is what happened. I understand that even a broken pipe that might contaminate a water system is a public safety issue. However, this is a wetland. It should have gone through the EIC. It should have been addressed, an engineered system, and a plan of action should have been taken not wholesale cutting down of trees, bulldozing, and creating what amounts to a trough. This is not a stream bed now, it is a trough. And when the rain comes, it will, nature will provide, it will erode that, it will siltate the, the stream, it will um, widen the stream bed be, out of necessity, and the trees will die. There was a lot of disregard for what is actually in here. I think that, uh, the way that they just bulldoze their way in without any sort of mitigation. I mean, it's encouraging that the, that the siltation fence is shown up here, but there's none on the other side. So as far as what is that going to do, not much. Um, I think that if we have the rains that they're talking about this, uh, this next couple of days, we're going to see some real problems. We're going to see some loss of some very large trees. We're going to see some massive erosion. Um, this wouldn't be the way I think that you should really handle the situation. There's no, there was no coordination between the water department that's doing the repair and the environmental board. If you're going to do a, if you're going to do a job such as this, you should coordinate the departments. The problem did not happen overnight, but unfortunately, those of us who live on this street don't seem to have any knowledge of what goes on around here because people just think we're just out of our minds. Bottom line. If they found the emergency, they should, have gone to the, they should have gone to the health department, they should have talked with the people there and said, hey, look, we need to do this. We need a comprehensive plan. We need to work together to fix this problem. I know it's an emergency. We've got to do it right now. But it wouldn't take anything for a bunch of people from town hall that we pay to look and, and work on our best behalf to come down here and look at the situation, come up with the best idea, and make sure that because we have an emergency with a pipe over there, that we're not destroying something over here that's going to come back to haunt us later.